Hi class, in this video I want to do a quick introduction to surface area. And it's actually a pretty straightforward process and there's just going to be an integral formula to follow. Okay, so the surface area of some equation, okay, so we have some equation um, z is equal to a function of x and y, okay, and um, x and y exist within this certain domain that we're interested in or region that we're interested in and where the partial derivatives of x and with respect to x and y are both continuous, we have the following. The surface area is a double integral over this region, okay, and it's just equal to the square root of the partial derivative of x squared plus the partial derivative with respect to y squared plus 1 integrating over that region. Now, um, you can do these problems dy dx or dx dy, and sometimes you might have to, for the harder problems, switch them to polar coordinates. So just, just be mindful of that. All right, so if we use the alternative notation for partial derivatives, you can rewrite the formula as follows, okay? Um, just putting in this notation for the partial derivatives. And just notice the similarity between the surface area formula that we see here and the arc length formula. Very, very similar. All right, let's do one example here. So let's find the area of the part of the surface. So here's our surface. Z is equal to x squared plus 2y that lies above the tri tri triangular region we'll call T in the xy plane, and the triangular region has the following vertices, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. When you go to set up these problems, I, I really highly suggest that you um, sketch it first so you can see the triangular region here. And obviously the way we're going to want to set this up, you're going to see here it's a dy dx. Uh, we're going to want to integrate y first here because y is defined in terms of x with this line right here. y is equal to x. And then we know x goes from 0 to 1. So it's a pretty straightforward process to set this uh, formula up. Okay. So again, just using our formula that we have here, take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, you get 2x, we're going to square that. Partial derivative um, respect to y, you just get 2, we're going to square that. And then we're going to add 1. And then as I said, we've got to figure out what your bounds of integration are. So going back, we're going to go y first. So y goes from 0 to the line y is equal to x, so 0 to x, and then our x is going to go from 0 to 1. Okay. So cleaning up the inside of this radical, we get the square root of 4x squared plus 5. Now notice this is important. We're doing dy first. So this is just a constant. Okay. Piece of cake. All right. When we integrate this, we just get y evaluated from 0 to x. Well, the perfect news is the 0 drops right out. So we're going to replace y with x. Now we just have to solve this integral right here. This is, a, this is a u substitution integral. You're going to let u be the inside of the radical. When then you uh, figure out what this integral becomes, you end up getting 1 eighth times 2 thirds, and then in parentheses, 4x squared plus 5 raised to the 3 halves power. Then you're just going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in the bounds of integration from 0 to 1. And this will very easily simplify to the following. So basically here this problem was just follow the formula. Sometimes what can be the most difficult part of all these problems, as we've seen over the last few sections, is just setting up the integral. Once you have the integral set up, the, the methods to solve these integrals are pretty straightforward. All right, class, I hope that helped.